Bitcoin surged to its highest level in more than two years today after it broke past the $50,000 mark. But joining me now to discuss is MicroStrategy's executive chairman and co-founder, Michael Saylor. Michael, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Morgan. Uh, so MicroStrategy had a very strong day, finishing the day up more than 11 percent. You're up 46 percent in the past week as well. I think this is your first time joining us since we saw these Bitcoin spot ETFs began trading. Initially, we saw shares of MicroStrategy sell off. But now, since January 11th, uh, MicroStrategy is outperforming all of those ETFs. Walk me through your outlook for Bitcoin, and then we'll jump into earnings. You know, I think a lot of this is just indicative of the popularity of Bitcoin as an asset class. It's, it's now the world's most popular investment asset. It's novel. It's digital. It's global. It's unique. And it's uncorrelated to traditional risk assets because it doesn't come with exposure to any given country, currency, company, quarterly result, product cycle, competitor, not to weather, not to war, not to an employee base or supply chain. And so that makes it a natural addition to the portfolio of a responsible investor. There's 10 years of pent up demand. People have been waiting for these ETFs. And, and finally, uh, mainstream investors are able to access Bitcoin. And I think that's what's driving the surge of capital in the asset class. And initially, there was a rebalancing as people were moving capital between the futures market and the miners and microstrategy and the ETFs. But following that rebalancing, I think uh, the, uh, the assets found its footing. And now people are beginning to realize that there's 10 times as much demand for Bitcoin coming in through these ETFs as there is supply coming from the natural sellers who are the miners. Yeah, and of course, we're going to get the have, having event, which I ima imagine will, uh, you know, sort of shift some of those supply demand dynamics coming into the spring as well. Earnings last week, you rebranded the company or announced the rebranding of the company as a Bitcoin development company. What does that mean? Well, it's a natural decision for us, given the success of our Bitcoin strategy and our unique status as the world's largest public company holder of Bitcoin. MicroStrategy is an operating company that can actively manage its capital structure and its business operations with more flexibility than an investment trust, which is what these spot ETFs are. So we're going to develop software. We're going to generate cash flow. We're going to leverage the capital markets all in order to accumulate more Bitcoin for our shareholders and also to promote the growth of the Bitcoin network. Given the fact that the majority of enterprise value is now based upon those Bitcoin related activities, it makes sense for us to call ourselves a Bitcoin development company in the same way as you see a real estate development company or a petroleum development company. Yeah, and certainly the largest publicly traded holder of Bitcoin, 190,000 uh, Bitcoin as of uh, into January, worth at current price is more than $8 billion. Um, the, the flywheel that is the software business, the, the business intelligence business, you're shifting to the cloud, you're rolling out generative AI offerings. That subscription services revenue was up last quarter, but overall revenue was down. I guess walk me through that business and how that rolls out this year and how that feeds back into the Bitcoin, if it does explicitly. Well, we're going through a transition from on-premises to cloud, and AI is a really big driver of that transition. So there's a lot of enthusiasm for our new AI offering, and we built it into the cloud offering, just as, just as you can see people excited about Microsoft's co-pilot AI offering and driving their revenues. We think that uh, our AI offering is also going to drive an acceleration of migration from on-premise to the, the cloud, and over time, it'll allow us to continue to grow the business. You talked about leveraging capital markets or continuing to. What does that look like in 2024, especially when there are, when there are some speculative investors out there that, that believe you might embark on another stock split? Well, you know, we're fortunate to be able to manage our capital structure actively and in a creative way. So sometimes we look to equity markets when that's the best way to acquire Bitcoin. But we've also done converts and we can we continue to look at the convert market. We can refinance debt. We've refinanced our debt in the past and, and retired debt before. So we may issue debt. We may retire or refinance debt. We also are looking at uh, potential preferred equity issuances or, or anything else that might be accretive to our shareholders. Uh, we try to be uh, open-minded, prudent, thoughtful, and opportunistic as these opportunities present themselves.